clumsy. I think eastern suburbs will and can improve 100% on that. Um, the week off just hasn't helped them. Their handling in that first half of it was awful. And I really honestly believe they will improve 100%. I don't think Parramatta can. Closeness of the scores made it an interesting game, but it wasn't, wasn't great football. I think the occasion got to both teams. But Parramatta, you've certainly got to give it to them. They've got a lot of heart and uh, they, I think there were a few blunders made there yesterday, tactically, by both sides. And uh, uh, I suppose in the end, uh, those two goal kicks by Cronin saved what would have been a barrage of criticism. Yes, but it, I'm, I'm the, the uh, leader of the band. I'm the sister Anna carrying the banner about Mick Cronin and the Sydney Cricket Ground. But that, that didn't dispel my doubts about Cronin yesterday. That wasn't pressure, the pressure that I'm talking of. I'm talking about of grand final pressure. And he's still got to prove it in a grand final. And I wish him well. I hope that his football career in Sydney doesn't go out on the note that under pressure of a grand final he buckles. Just maybe case that criticism is just what, uh, just what he needed because yeah, he's obviously give... concentrating very hard on his kicks now, he, uh, he lines them up and he, and he says, he just says, I'm not going to miss them. Well, good luck to him. But, Frank, I'm going to give some more criticism now and I'll give it before we can get too far into this. I cannot understand how Hastings, for the first time this season, did not use the tactical kicks. I cannot understand how Hastings, a fortnight before, had played so brilliantly. He had a week off, a week's rest. He won the Dallium Award during the week, was runner-up the previous week in the Rothman Medal. And I thought Hastings had the lowest game that he's had in five years of Sydney first grade football. Frank? He won the Rothman's Medal. He won. He wasn't runner-up. Runner up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I agree. He had a he had a uh, low game, a, a lower well, than normal game, it. but um, didn't, didn't kick at all. Uh, no, I'll tell you why. Because he's dropped the ball 22 times, and if you haven't got the ball and you and you haven't consistently got it, you can't kick it. Yeah, but they have plenty of <laughs> no, plenty of penalties. Enough. Case was talking about using the using the the tactical, uh, the tactical kicking that he and they they had plenty of ball from scrums and everything too, but uh, I, I feel that the game was close yesterday because. Uh, Manly, uh, uh, Eastern Suburbs weren't as good as they were the last time they played uh, Parramatta and Parramatta improved 100%. I, I thought it was a good game. I enjoyed it with all the, the faults that were there, the dropping of the ball and all that sort of thing. But I'm sure Harvey won't uh, want to remember that game f for too long and uh, uh, many of the other Eastern Suburbs players too. They will improve. They must improve if they're going to go any further than the It was a good game because it held your interest. That's right. Right. Didn't it? Well, yeah. if we're going to hold the viewers' interest, let's show them some tape. Now, here's the match coming up and the first uh, uh, controversial incident came after 11 minutes. Now this pass was ruled forward and a no try. Now if you think that one's controversial, wait to have a look at the one that Hilditch went in for a try on. That wasn't controversial though. Well that I think it was forward. A forward. Definitely a forward, forward pass. pass. Now here's Gitto uh, at just on half time, pulled down short of the line. The ball here didn't go over the line at any stage, so there's no way it could be a try. And he this didn't is, play it forward. But at the time, he played it forward, and it looked as though it was controversial. But Hartley was right again on this occasion. See he had his head on. See how he played the advantage, really? He could have given at least a penalty there, the Parramatta players lying all over the tackle player. Now, we go to three minutes into the second half, and the fairy tale comes true. Hastings to Laurie, and Laurie, after eight weeks in reserve grade, goes in to make it 5-0. At this stage, each look to be home and hose. Look at the way Laurie goes past Price here. Yeah, well, very fresh and fit, rocky Laurie. That's right. Replacements, against Jack. A, Replacements. Against a player that just didn't let up in that first half. Yeah, I here's here's the controversial like pass from Kenny. Back to the left. Now, Hilditch was offside. Doesn't matter if he collared the ball in. Hilditch was indeed offside. He was in an offside position to begin with. Look. Gee, there's not an inch in there. I don't think so either. Not I, an inch. I've, I've seen it ten times now and I still don't know whether he's offside or not. The well, ball uh, travelled along that line case. Yes, but he was offside. No, he wasn't. Was he's offside. not in front of that line. He was, he and to, Kenny he was on the line. He had to stand there and wait for Kenny to come to him. Kenny was on the line All and right. so, was, so, was the, uh, so was Hilditch. Okay. Now, this is this, the turning this is, point. This is the turning point of the game. This is uh, Sterling not put down by Faye, for ultimately mm. yes. Quick hands by Ella, onto Growth, Growth goes in, that made it 8-5. Now we come to the 37th minute. Uh, we'll see that one again head on, I think, because that, uh, you're quite right, Sterling had a superb game. See, Warnicky misses and him badly. Warnicky missed him badly. Mm. Terry Faye had him and then let him go. Look, oh, look at this. Terry. The smallest player in the field. Yeah. Mm. And, and there's the even up with the elbows in the back. Thank you. Now, 16 minutes gone, and that was the try. And now, with a couple of minutes to go in the match, here is O'Reilly taking it up close to the line. That's the most vital aspect of the game. Yeah. If he could have scored there, it would have been handy for Guido to kick the goal, but they had to go wide. What an experience. No one out there to cover. Um, growth was standing in amongst the forwards. Yeah, watch where Growth is here. Yeah. There he is, number five. Dummy half, 
But there's great, great disarray in the Parramatta line up here because they had four new players on. Yeah, they and they're all in a bunch Arthur there. Or Martha. Now, I thought that was a major blunder taking off our extra and time, and at this stage, Edge officially protested that a tackle, a seventh tackle try, had been made by Gitto, and that took us into the uh, situation the final ten minutes. Now we're looking at Des O'Reilly trying to steal the ball from Muggledon. Cronin kicked the goal after two minutes, and it became 10-8. These really brought themselves unstuck, didn't they, these oh, two yeah. penalties? They, they didn't deserve oh, to win, one too, really. Look at this. Harvey's over pretty. the top with the swinging arm after six minutes. It's 12-8. Cronin finished up kicking three from four. It was the ball game. 12-8. Eastern Suburbs going down to Parramatta in that major semi-final. Now, I've been a little bit hard on a few players there, gentlemen, but really, there were so many stupid things done in that mm, match yep. that the questions have to be asked. Right. Well, certainly East have got to ask how... Uh, First of all, John Harvey threw a, a silly pass and then gave away uh, a ridiculous penalty in, in extra time. And that was ultimately the difference in 100 minutes of football, those two, two mistakes. There's only two I, goals of difference, Ron, and yet Parramatta did a lot less silly things than what Eastern Suburbs did. Exactly now, you know Eastern Suburbs can eliminate all that and by... Look, I think Eastern will. Suburbs are still good things. Mm. I, I think that they will come back and do it the hard way as they did in the other two premierships they There won. will be changes to that side. There has to be. Mm. But even at half-time, without any points on the board for either side, I still think Parramatta was the better side after 40 minutes of play. Yeah. yeah. On an error, error count basis or on a play basis? Yeah, on a play basis. Yeah, case. I'm inclined yeah. to agree with well, you. Well, I thought now, they, let's... their players performed better. I mean, you look yep. at the number of players at Sterling, Hilditch, Price, yep. O'Reilly, Muggleton. I mean, That's they right. were good performances. Well, I think well, Muggleton's let's, let's have a look at the side was a blessing for it Parramatta. Was, as it was, as it turned out. Now, let's have a look at the controversy of Gitto's try being scored on the seventh tackle. Here is conclusive proof that it was scored on the sixth tackle. Now, if you watch it, uh, here's the play coming up. I need a booster. Now, that's one tackle. Now, there's, no, no, it's no tackles yet. No. We're, we've got to start yet. There's the penalty. There's penalty. Now, we have the, we have the tap, and this is where the Parramatta uh, Bard Winkle, or whoever it was who gave the information, he counted the tap as a tackle. Oh. 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 Well, it's not. Now, yes. that is one tackle. Two. Somebody start counting. Was, was I, I, I a... lose it after three. Well, we haven't got to three. Yeah, we have got. That's three, three now. See, There's I've three. lost it already. There's three. three. Greg, come and give me some lessons, will you? That Michael's not watching this. Here comes four. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, by the way, is my seven-year-old. Now, here it is. That's five, Ron. Five. It's Des O'Reilly. Right. Now we're on the sixth tackle. Yeah, he's got the right signal too. That he has. There's no doubt in the world that was a legitimate try. But we come to the fact, and I want to deal with this quickly because I have other things I want to talk about, that <clears throat> the rugby league doesn't seem to be able to make rules that fit the occasion. They knocked back Parramatta in 1978 from their protest after the match with Manly that was refereed by Hartley because indeed there was no protest made during the match. Now we have the situation where they did protest during the match, as it turned out incorrectly, and people are saying today that it was, uh, what, a standover tactic uh, to intimidate Greg Hartley in those final 20 minutes. I personally think, Ron, uh, the point you make is very valid, but I think Hartley's a much bigger man than to be intimidated by an action such as that. He's had a lot of experience, he's refereed a lot of grand finals. I think he would have taken that protest in his stride. I think it was a harassment by the Parramatta camp and I think... But, if, but excuse me, they had to do it or else they didn't have a legal leg to stand on. Well, I, I, I'd like to know how and I've heard rumours that a, a cricket ground member in the bar looking at, at the uh, replay of the try uh, counted seven tackles. He obviously don't know, doesn't know the rules and from that Parramatta went and the instruction went out for the protest. Now, you know, if, if, if that's how how Parramatta are so obsessed with uh, the man that refereed yesterday, I think that uh, that they were harassing him and I think that the league should do something about it. No, I disagree completely. You, you can't have it both ways, Peter. If, if, if the league says that you must protest while the match is on in order to have some legal comeback after the match,